Hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm Bramble Gaming, the home of the gaming, and I'm pretty sure that Bowser's Fury has blown everyone's expectations away over the past couple of weeks. Not only is it a very enjoyable adventure, it's decently sizable for an add-on to a port of a Nintendo game. Each of the 12 islands that you'll play throughout Bowser's Fury are basically like miniature levels that test the player's skills in unique and stylish ways. While some of the islands in Bowser's Fury do feel basic and somewhat lackluster, there are definitely others that are very creative, unique, and a blast to play through. So, today, we're going to be ranking off the 12 islands in Bowser's Fury from worst to best, so that y'all know which ones you should replay and complete, and which ones aren't really worth your time. Now notice that I say we are ranking these islands, as for this video, I'm teaming up with my man Odyssey Central to help me put together this ranking. Hey everyone, I'm Odyssey Central. In this video here, we'll be ranking each of the 12 main islands in Bowser's Fury based on two main factors, how fun they were to play through and how creative the island's ideas were. Anyways, with all that said y'all, let's get started. I think a lot of y'all can agree with me that Claw Swipe Coliseum is hands down the worst island in this game. It's pretty much just Nintendo's excuse to copy and paste the Boom Boom and Pom Pom fights from 3D World without making any changes to their movesets. The first Cat Shine challenge is a fight with Cat Boom Boom, effortless. The second Cat Shine mission is a fight against Cat Pom Pom, a complete joke. And the third Cat Shine challenge, instead of being something original or different, is just a fight with Cat Boom Boom again, but this time on an arena with spike waves that move at the speed of a snail. Oh gosh, now I'm really gonna struggle with it. Just kidding, it's still insanely easy. There's nothing original or fun to Claw Swipe Coliseum. All it has to offer is repeated content from 3D World. Plus, the cat shards for this island aren't even hidden that well, and can easily be found without a problem. By far, the worst island in this game. Let's go. Pipe Path Island is another one that is quite lacking in the creativity department. Sure, it's a bit more unique than just copy and pasted bosses like we saw in Claw Swipe Coliseum, but it's not that much better. As the name implies, this whole island is based around using clear pipes to navigate. While it does make this island unique from the others, I'd say that it's not really in a good way. There are other clear pipe mazes in 3D World normally, but on top of that, going through these pipes is just not that fun. It's pretty mindless as all you have to do is click in the direction you want to go in. There's not really much fun movement you could do here since you're pretty much limited to where the clear pipes can send you. So in short, this island both fails to be creative and to be fun, which is why this is going to take 11th place. Let's go! Since First Step Island is the first island in Bowser's Fury, it doesn't have too much to talk about. It's mainly meant to be a tutorial level, and the best part of it is used right at the start of the game when you have to avoid Fury Bowser's attacks for the first time. This was a sick introduction to Bowser's new form, and really stands out when compared to the first levels of any other Mario game just because of how epic it is. After that though, you can't access First Step Island again until the post game is unlocked, where you'll be brought back to the island and have 4 more cat shines to collect. Sadly, all 4 of these extra shines on this island are pretty basic. One of them is obtained by simply having Bowser Jr. paint graffiti, one of them is another Fury Shadow Chase, and the other two are your standard Cat Shine Shards and Fury Blocks. Compared to the extra missions of the other islands in this game, these ones just don't stand out. It's definitely an aesthetically nice island and is a great introduction to the game, but in terms of gameplay and creativity, First Step Island doesn't have that much going for it. Let's go. Roiling Roller Island is a great example of how simply not being fun is enough to make it a bad island. Creativity-wise, it's decently solid, you have to go across several spinning objects with lava embedded in them. Where this falls flat for me though is that it's probably the least fun island to play on. The way these rotating platforms are set up, they require Mario to do a lot of waiting before he's actually able to move on. Lava is also a one-hit kill in Bowser's Fury, so if you accidentally slip into it once, you're not only going to lose your power-up and a few coins, but you'll also have to start the whole thing over from scratch. This makes it extremely tedious to go across every single time. On top of that, you have to climb up this path multiple times in order to get all the shines, as for one of them, you need a key from the very top to bring it all the way back down to the bottom. This just adds even more tedium to the already very tedious island. I absolutely hate having to go slow in games, especially if there's nothing interesting to do while going slow. Waiting for these blocks to rotate all the way around so that you can move on is just not interesting or fun at all. So for these reasons, we're going to be giving Roiling Roller Island 9th place. Let's go. You know, this one is alright. It's a bit small, and the layout is a bit basic, but it's not that bad. In fact, most of the challenges here are quite fun to take down. Risky Whiskers Island's main arena is completely made up of donut blocks that fall down and disappear right after you step on them. Since the arena has nothing but these blocks, you'll be needing to constantly move around if you don't want to fall and go back to the start. 
In addition to a harder than normal Fury Shadow Chase, this island also has a pretty creative time challenge. When you hit the timer switch, you'll be put up against a path of donut blocks with stone bricks blocking your way, which you'll need to blow up with soccer bombs to grab the cat shine before the time runs out. This is the only place in Bowser's Fury where the soccer bombs are used, which was one of my favorite gimmicks from Super Mario 3D World. Combining those bombs with a donut block course results in a pretty enjoyable and intense combo. If the rest of the cat shines on Risky Whisker Island were as fun and unique as this one, then it would definitely be higher up on the list. But due to the first couple of basic challenges, Risky Whisker Island is a pretty okay level all around. Let's go! Bringing an end to the first half of this list, we have Fort Flaptrap. This is definitely a pretty middle of the pack island. I'd say it doesn't really excel at anything, but it doesn't really fail at anything either. This island is based around these platforms that flip whenever Mario jumps. He has to use these in order to defeat bullies for the first shine, and later on defeat Magic Koopas as well. I always sort of like these platforms as well, so I'm happy that they got incorporated as the main gimmick for one of these islands. On top of that, this island also has a small beach to explore as well to get some cat shards and the Bowser block shine as well. There really isn't much more to say here, nothing is super out of the ordinary or exceptional in any way, but every shine here is decently fun to collect, so we're going to be putting this at number 7. Let's go. Scamper Shores is a great island to start the game off to. It's simple, but it's extremely well designed. This island is based off of the gimmick of wall jumping off of rotating chain fences hanging in the air, the likes of which were briefly seen in level 3-2 of Super Mario 3D World. There's a lot to praise about this island specifically. The cat shine shards are well hidden, the flow of the platforming feels natural and smooth, and on top of all that, the island goes through some pretty significant changes in between cat shines, which really keeps the levels fresh and enjoyable. When you first visit this island, you'll be tasked with getting to the top of the mountain while platforming off of fences and dodging cat conk doors. When you return at a later time, you'll need to chase down another fury shadow while avoiding all of the cat piranha plants that have infested the island. And for the third Cat Shine Challenge, you're required to get a key near the top of the island while dealing with both Fire Piranha Plants and Piranha Creepers. Adding in completely different enemy types with each island variation really helps Scamper Shores feel new every time, and helps it stand out among the rest of the levels in this game. Scamper Shores is definitely one of the better islands in Bowser's Fury. Let's go! Crisp Climb Tower is a very interesting one. Instead of just being anchored to the ground like the other islands, this has a grounded segment and a floating segment. The grounded part is pretty basic, snowy, and icy terrain, however it really picks up after you get the propeller box. The rest of this level is centered around platforming using it. You don't really get to use this item all too much in this mode, so seeing it have its own island dedicated to it is very nice. The platforming here is also very fun to do once you combine the propeller box with wall jumps and other moves. Collecting the shines here was a lot of fun, and also doing the timer shine with the propeller box is a nice challenge that I thought was a good way to challenge people's skills with using the item. All around, this island is pretty solid, and with its unique and fun platforming, it's going to take 5th place. Let's go! Pounce Bounce Isle is easily one of the most fun and fluid levels in this game. It's a joy to just run around and soar through this island, as its layout presents a great combination of open-ended platforming on the ground and in the air. This whole area is based around bounce pads that only activate when you jump off them, and with that in mind it has you scaling multiple smaller islands to get to your prize. When you first visit this island, you'll have to deal with Boomerang Brothers and Block Steppers, but later in the game Catbull Bills will be added to give the island a whole different vibe. Additionally, the key challenge to this island actually makes the key somewhat difficult to find, as instead of placing it straight in the open, it's on a high wall usually obscured from the player's view. That's a huge plus for Pounce Bounce Isle, as most of the keys in other islands feel way too easy to find. Overall, Pounce Bounce Isle is a very fun area to platform through and just mess around in, and I find myself coming back to this one way more often than many of the others. Let's go! Trickety Tower is a real fun one. It's based on using these invisible platforms that glow around Mario when he gets near them. This makes this island very distinct from the others, as moving around it is quite fun. Some of you may think that it'd be tedious to move around an invisible path, but I actually think it was executed very well here. The path is always big enough here so you can run along it without risking Mario falling off. I also found it quite fun to jump between the different segments by trying to base where I'm landing off of where the enemies are standing. I think this island is a perfect example of using this gimmick right, and I really can't see how they could have done much better with it. It never feels cramped and it never feels like you have to walk super slowly across it. I enjoy how this island is set up a lot and how creatively you can move around it, even without being able to see exactly where the floor is. For all of these reasons, we're going to be giving it number 3. Let's go! 
Alright, so let me tell y'all why Slipskate Slope is such a good island. Y'all remember that Ice Skate power-up from Super Mario 3D World, right? That was actually a super fun power-up to use, but it never felt fully utilized, as the only places you could get it in were either super short or felt too cramped. But here at Slipskate Slope, Nintendo made a whole obstacle course with even branching paths that completely revolves around using this Ice Skate. See, now you're talking about language. Part of what makes Slipskate Slope so fun is because of how fast paced the challenges are. Since this is a completely forward obstacle course, you'll be going pretty fast while completing it. The challenges are set up with that increased speed in mind though, so they don't feel too frustrating or tight. My favorite challenge here is easily the third one, as it tasks you with getting a key to unlock a cat shine at the beginning, but the catch is that the key is at the exact end of the obstacle course. So once you complete the course again, you'll have to figure out how to traverse back up the slope without using the ice skate power up to get the key to the cage. This is one of the most creative shines in this game, as there's actually hidden platforms on the sides of the slope as well as in the middle that you'll have to find in order to complete the task. You better not fall off the sides while you're doing this though because that would be catastrophic. <laughs> <laughs> Having the player go back through the course without the power up that it was designed around sounds like an exploit, but of course it is something Nintendo would completely take advantage of for a challenge, and I absolutely love that. Slipskate Slope is easily the most creative island in this game, but of course, it's not quite the best one out of them all. Let's go! And finally, our choice for the absolute best island in Bowser's Fury, we have Mount Magmeow. Of all the islands in the game, this is easily the most distinct and interesting design-wise. It's basically a giant cat face that we have to climb up using these platforms. This looks nothing like anything else in Bowser's Fury and was extremely fun to discover for the first time. Climbing up this thing truly feels like a journey, and being able to stand on top of the cat ears and look down across the entirety of Lake Lapcat is very rewarding. The first portion takes place in these platforms that you need to control in order to move forward. That's nothing terribly special, however it's fun to be able to skip some sections using the game's power-ups. The scenery in this first section as well is also great with all the lava and the color scheme just making this level look very distinct. The second half takes place on the top of the mountain, which is a launching off point for a few more bonus catch shines not attached to the five each island normally has. This is easily a great late game level as well with the enemies and lava everywhere. So for having an incredibly unique design, especially compared to the other islands, and for being a lot of fun to go through, Mount Magmeow will take first place as the best island in Bowser's Fury. Alright y'all, there was all the 12 islands in Bowser's Fury ranked from worst to best. Did you enjoy this list? If so, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And also, you should check out my boy Odyssey Central over at his channel. He does some great Nintendo videos, so you should go give them a look. Alright y'all, with that all said, I'll see y'all in the next video. Ramble Gaming, over and out.